chair of the public theater in New York City, where I have been performing, presenting, facilitating Watch Me work for uh, 11 years. And it was started, just for those of you who don't know, it's June, so I might as well tell you, it was started um, when I sat down and decided that I wanted to hang out uh, and do a show, a play, which would consist of me working with other workers, whether they be writers, artists, visual artists, whatever, other people working on whatever they wanted to work on, we would work together. And then I would talk with them about their work and their creative process. And that's how Watch Me Work began. That's the way it's always been. And now uh, we usually do it in the lobby of the public theater, or sometimes I do it all over the world, wherever I might happen to be. But now during this uh, very interesting chapter of uh, the uh, world experiment, we are here. I'm very appreciative to the public theater for making it all happen and for HowlRound coming on a few years ago, facilitating our live stream and now our fabulous, beautiful uh, world here that we are virtual meetup spot on Zoom. I really, really appreciate you guys for showing up. Um, some new faces and some folks uh, uh, that we've seen a lot of like Jim, because Jim, I go, you're right in my little square there. Hey, and no, no, all these other people who are wonderful to see. Anyway, I have a few things to say before we start. Usually what we do is we, uh, well, Audrey would tell you how to get in touch. But uh, totally. so, I'll tell you, so I'll tell you first, and then I have a little bit of a blurb, then Audrey will tell you how to get in touch. So usually what we're going to do this. We're going to work together for 20 minutes. And then after that 20 minutes of time, um, I will talk with you about your questions about your creative process. We have plenty of time for that. What we don't have time for is to talk specifically about something that you've actually written and to get you know this kind of uh, specific feedback. We're more talking about process, not product, so that everybody can be part of the conversation. Um, Audrey will tell you in a sec how to get in touch, but I just wanna say a couple of things given where we are and who we are. And uh, yeah, so number one, if you're out protesting today, or you have been out protesting uh, in these past few uh, uh, 300 years, thank you. Uh, stay safe and uh, stay peaceful, please. Please stay peaceful. Um, also, uh, if you're not protesting for whatever reason, uh, everybody protesting or not protesting, um, keep doing your work, please. Keep showing up for yourself. Um, and that's also a very good way to show up for your community, however you might define that. Um, showing up is, uh, whether it's in the streets with arms and banners held high or at, the, at your desk in front of the page or whatever, that's really the best thing you can do. Um, but the really, really most, most, most important thing we can, we can all do is register to vote. Please register to vote make sure you get your suite behind, I say that in an appropriate way, over to the polling, your, your voting place um, in November, especially. Um, for extra credit, get a friend to register to vote too and, and make sure they go to vote please in November. And I'm gonna be real straightforward about this, the vote blue. Vote, co we are in code blue, people. There is no conversation to be had about that. Um, we are in code, this is code blue, vote blue in November, please. That is the most important thing uh, you can do if you want, if you're wondering what can I do these days, I feel very overwhelmed. Register to vote, go to vote November, code blue. Um, and I will just go out on a limb here. Um, in my opinion, writing in Bernie is not an idea. Um, writing in Bernie is not a demonstration of principle. It is a demonstration to my mind of privilege. Um, this is an emergency, okay? Um, so. Uh, yeah, here we go. We're going to work for 20 minutes and then we're going to talk with you about your creative process. Audrey's gonna tell you how to get in touch. Audrey, go ahead, take it away. First of all, I second everything that you said. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you have questions <laughs> and you're inside of the Zoom, all you need to do is click um, on the raise your hand button, which is likely in the participant tab located at the bottom of your screen on a laptop or the top if you're on an iPad or a tablet. Um, if you uh, are watching on HowlRound.tv, you can tweet at us at at WatchMeWorkSLP with the hashtag HowlRound, H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D. And you can tweet at us at, at, um, at Public Theater NY 
or write into our Instagram. And if you have any issues, please feel free to chat me and I'll help you. Okay. Thank you. So, um, and again, at the risk of, I, I kind of opened the door for political conversation. I would like to talk about your work and your creative process, um, please, in the, after we work together for 20 minutes. I appreciate that. Here we go.
All right, here we are. Happy to talk with you about your work, your creative process, what you're writing, what you're not writing. I don't see any questions quite yet. Yeah, you can sit in silence. Hmm. Hmm. I see a question. Kendall. Um, are you there, Kendall? Hi. Hi. So, hi, um, hi, Susan Laurie, how are you? Happy to see you. Thank you so much, you too. Um, I have a question. Um, given the last, you know, few months, few days, I've been finding that sometimes it's been kind of hard to, you know, sit down, write, or even, you know, read or, you know, make something because, you know, the world is crazy. I was wondering if you've been dealing with that too. And if so, have you read anything or maybe found a certain routine that you have stuck to that you have, um, that you've clung to that has really helped you? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. Um, in difficult times and even when times are easier, easy, um, it's, I feel it's good to have a routine, you know, not everybody agrees with me on this, but part of my routine, um, these week, Monday through Thursday is showing up at watch me work. That's part of it. That's sort of like one of the blocks. So you have little modular things that you put in your day, right? So I like to start my day with a meditation practice. Do you have a meditation practice, Kendall? I doing yoga every day for the Great. past year. Great. So did you, I'm sorry, you cut in and out. You said you had a, a yoga, you said? Yoga. Yeah, I do about an, I try to do an hour, hour and a half of yoga before Fantastic. I start. Fantastic. So does that come with a, do you uh, include a meditation practice on there? Or, or I mean, or is it, is it the meditation practice? How's it go? I try to have it be my meditation practice, but I definitely could be a bit more focused on just the actual like breathing itself and the actual like focus as the meditation requires, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So maybe uh, before, or I mean, what, my yoga practice says that the yoga postures get you ready for meditation. So maybe what you might want to do is after you've done your beautiful asana for an hour, an hour and a half, you can sit and mm -hmm. for a little bit, you know? Okay. Ten minutes or fifteen, or however much time you have, twenty minutes if you want, or you can do meditation first thing in the morning. Um, that's a nice way to. You're just sitting and breathing. I find mm -hmm. that very helpful. Okay, so um, then you know some kind of journaling. You can you know again you're making yourself a little schedule that um, you don't have to do it, but you find that your life is 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 feels better when you when you do your little schedule right so you mm. got your yoga practice you're going to add a little meditation on there right and then you have a little bit of writing practice mm -hmm. so you create a schedule for yourself um i've uh, since i uh, went on hiatus for my big ass job show running genius aretha which is a huge job um i've been working nonstop because everyone's on hiatus but me so I've had mm -hmm. to turn in scripts, edit uh, episodes, uh, do rewrites, all kinds of, have all kinds of meetings with actors, blah, 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 all kinds of things. So I have not uh, actually been just sitting around and, oh, yeah, you know, um, yeah. Uh, you know, okay. I, I feel, I feel like, uh, you know, books that are maybe inspiring or books that, that encourage introspection might be a good time. You know, um, reading, I was just reading some essays by Maya Angelou. Those were kind of exciting and fun to read. Um, essays by Toni Morrison. Um, uh, poetry, things, mm -hmm. Pema, Pema Chodron is awesome. You know okay. her, you know Pema? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, is that helpful? I mean, it's like, it's like, pick a book, pick a time, sit down with it. Pick a piece, pick up, pick up your notebook. Ask yourself to sit down with it for 20 minutes. Mm. Um, and this is what our practice is for. Mm -hmm. You know, our yeah. practice, it's, 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 
gravy during the, the easy days, but during these difficult times, it's, it's the, and I'm, I don't eat meat, but I'll just say it's the meat and potatoes, you know, <laughs> me neither. It's, so. it's the tofu and potatoes. Exactly. You know, it's a, it's a seitan, oh, that's kind of weird, but it's, it's, it's a tofu and potatoes. You know what I mean? Um, this is, this is, this is the heart and soul. This is, um, something that's going to keep us, um, not calm and not sedated. You know what I'm saying? I've had friends sure. who are drinking a lot these days. I, uh, yeah. I mean, whatever gets you through the night, but not my thing you know we want to stay we want to stay present and awake and able to respond we want to feel our feelings even if it if it's painful mm. you know yeah um we want to direct our our feelings toward the appropriate people so we don't want to fill up with anger and necessarily direct it at our child although i have you know <laughs> You know, no, I'm not angry at you. I'm angry at, you know, someone I can't even yell at because, you know, uh, I don't, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so we want to direct our anger in the appropriate places and we sure. want to direct our love to everyone who's wearing a mask. No, <laughs> to, you know, you know, um, is that, is that helpful, Kendall? I, I, I don't know. That's great. No, it's like what you're like, because what I'm, what I'm hearing is like just finding ways to sort of like ground yourself and stay present and connected to what you want to make and you know not not lie to yourself about how you're feeling but don't let it inhibit you from wanting to be an artist and create mm -hmm. i think that mm -hmm. it, yes. In, yeah yes yes Thank, thanks mm -hmm. for translating that i appreciate oh cool. <laughs> translate i really appreciate it thank thanks. you so much thank you. thank you thank you kendall um, up next, we have Roxanne. Roxanne, are you here? Yes, I am. Hello. Hi. Hello. Thank you. Um, I just finished a 10-minute play, and I'm having my first reading in a couple of weeks in a writing group. And I just wanted to know what, um, since I'm so new to this, what is the, um, the, the purpose of a reading other than just hearing it out loud or is that the purpose or what are some things that I can take away from from a reading? Uh, well, but did you congratulate yourself, Roxanne? I didn't, not yet, I should, congrats. <laughs> I finished. <laughs> yeah, you finished, well done, there you go. There you yeah. go, so, so many, we, you know, we forget to do that, you know? Those of us yeah. who are good at working and 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 not as great at celebrating, you know. So yeah. congratulations, congratulations. You. Now you've got so you've got a reading group. Mm -hmm. um, are they are they actors? They're not actors. They're um, other writers. Great. Um, so, okay. Um, so yeah, not not actors. Okay. So okay. So no, it's okay. It's okay. So they're going to be reading your play aloud, or or just to read it and then give you feedback. We're work. gonna read it out loud, and mm. and then we're gonna get. Um, I'm gonna get feedback. Okay, okay. So I think the purpose of a reading group um, is a couple things. Um, oh, number one, which is not about a reading group at all. It's about you. Um, you can hear your play already. You have the ability to hear your play already, or your novel, or your screenplay, or the whatever. Right? You have that ability. Okay, and it might not be uh, fully, you know, gorgeous and fully formed, but you do have that ability. Uh, as writers, we want to remember that we're more like composers than anything who can hear the music without employing a, a full orchestra. Okay, right? Mm -hmm. So we have the ability to hear our play, our work already. Now, what's great about a reading group is that they are well, uh, they're um, amplifiers, okay. right? So they're amplifiers. So they're going to be like, <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be, yeah, oh my goodness, uh, right? So you're going to be able to hear it bigger, louder, more, more, right? Okay, that's yeah. going to be fun. That's going to be a lot of fun. The other great thing about a reading group is that you get to build community. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, now you want to make sure that when you're taking notes from the reading group, that people love you 
more than they love the idea of seeing one of their ideas in your work. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. See, because like, for example, me and you, I love you more than I love the idea of seeing something I told you to do. You do it. I don't care. Do it or not do it. I just right. got stuff for you. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So that kind of that you want to make sure that they're that kind of, you know, okay. 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 So got write, it. write down what they write down what the, their notes. If you don't like them, their notes, it's okay. Smile and keep writing. If they say yeah. something stupid, you know, note, note, giving notes on work is an art form in itself. Not everybody is as skilled. Okay. So yeah, if you yeah. like them as a person and they give like a stupid note, it's okay. I've gotten lots of stupid notes and given lots of stupid notes in my life, you know? Okay. okay? But yeah. it's a wonderful opportunity to build community and to hear your work through these beautiful, generous amplifiers. Congratulations on finishing your play. Yeah, Thank girl. you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Roxanne. Um, all right, up next we've got Ryan. Uh, Ryan, are you here? I see Ryan. What's up? Hey, how you um, doing? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I, um, or yeah, you know. Uh, you know, yeah. Um, but I just before I even speak, I would just uh, again thank you for this space and this sanctuary. And it's nice to see familiar faces on the Zoom. It's kind of amazing, the Zoom element of watch me work. Uh, the theater of, of getting to watch people work is pretty special. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, I'm, I know uh, we spoke a lot about our, our uh, COVID plays <laughs> or like, uh, or I loved, I've enjoyed the, unpacking of how to approach that or not approach that and uh, I will uh, uh, most of my writing comes from journaling um and it's uh I did it wasn't until I really could until I saw uh when the rainbow was enough or and I, I, at the public this year and I understood that I'm trying to write choreo poems <laughs> and that sort of uh and <laughs> and I've uh I'm coming to watch me work I feel like I've uh tried to, or been able to find how to use my voice or in this, and during these times, uh, how to use your voice and uh, your privilege. Um, and so I, so I started, I took a, I have this taped above my desk. Uh, I don't know if this is backwards, is it backwards? It's just to encourage to keep writing about the pandemic experience and that you'll know when you get there and to, I think most of, I think as I'm rambling, uh, I feel um, the journaling that I'm doing, it feels like it's uh, the research <laughs> that uh, about how to document or understand what the fuck's going on. <laughs> and um, I, uh, and that when I did my, perf I did a solo performance and I, what able to get me my writing into this performance was when I set a date or or timelines or or I've I've been I've really taken that from watching work of how to like you set yourself a date and then I mean if you tell people you're gonna show up and and perform for them you will <laughs> then then you have to be ready for for that date but I guess as um we're in this moment and as we're like going through it um. I guess I just also want to encourage people to journal because it's just it's uh, as well as their own writing, but it's been helpful to try to process. But I um. I guess I guess I'm on I'm. Uh, I don't I don't uh, I guess there is no. I guess in my note I said you will know you in my note it says you know when you uh you'll know when you get there to the end of this journaling experience. And I don't know if I'm just, if that, I feel that I'm letting myself process it, but I don't know if that's like letting me off the hook with like not a real, a real time frame, um, or if, uh, or I guess this is just how I'm trying to analyze my process or if just to keep going and to really trust that uh, when I arrive to, when I have this, massive work that I will take from a handwritten journal to then type it up and then to look at it in that format if that is uh 
if not setting a, a, a timeline now, if, if that is, uh, if that's okay, or if like that's, uh, I guess that's my, that's the root of my question or like that's where it's hanging out. I mean, what you can do, I mean, I'm thrilled that Intozaki Shange's work for colored girls who have considered suicide when the rainbow is enough gave you sort of an idea about like, hey, this, this is maybe the kind of thing that I'm doing too. Protesting again outside. Um, uh, sorry, it's kind of tricky to hear. Um, so I'm glad that, that her work has given you some kind of like, ha ha, this, this could be the kind of thing that I want to do too. Um, in terms of the, the time frame and all that, it is tricky. It's, it's, it's said when we started this however many weeks ago that um, one thing that it's easy to pace yourself and you know how far you're going, but when we don't know how far we're going or how long it's going to take, it's hard to pace yourself. Yeah, they're outside. Good, good. Um, so what I would suggest, since you've got pages and pages of journaling, you might start to type up your journaling. You know, so you can do it. So part of your writing day can be typing up some of the pages, maybe a page a day. And part of your writing day can be writing more things. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, so instead of looking for a finish line, that's one way when we know, you know, that's, that's one way we can, we can, we can organize ourselves, right? You can do it internally and say, half my day will be this, half my day will be this. And no matter what the day is, you can apply that to your day. Okay. Cool. And continue yeah, yeah. that way, you know? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I definitely, I, that makes, I feel like I have an all or nothing approach and, that's okay. and not to jump on, uh, 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 a soapbox or sort, but I sound like I uh, I was at Barclays last night and was out in the streets. And I think if anyone feels comfortable doing that, and if they're in and they have the right protective gear to do that, and as a white ally to to follow our brothers and sisters to to protect them, because that's why we're that's what we have to do, and uh, and just to and if you're doing just uh, just to keep track of this time too, is just <laughs> is just all I've uh, gathered thus far. But um, but I like yes, the all or nothing. Uh, I like I I think it's time to start typing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But thank you for that last thing you said too. Thank you. That's thank why you. you're one of thank the best, Ryan. Thanks, man. It's great thank to you, see Ryan. You. Thanks, Ryan. All right, we've got Lynn. Up next. Oh my. Hey, am I? You are hey. muted. Hi, Lynn. Hi. Hello. It's I've good to here. see you. Oh, it's so good to see you. I've been here all the time. Uh -huh. You know, as you will know, uh, probably. But I've been protesting since I was very young. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, I marched in the 60s <laughs> and the 70s and Jesus. Uh, in LA in the 90s mm -hmm. uh, and um, it's not the same mm -hmm. and it's breaking my heart because uh, though there were violent things in those days and there were uh, disruptive people in those days it, it seems to me the disruption is organized in some way and I felt for the first time uh, scared, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. just scared. You know, I'm an old white lady, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but it was dangerous for me. Mm -hmm. That's how I felt. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it's like, we do not learn from history. I, I was reading, there, there's, well, Stephen Hawking wrote a book called The History of Time. Mm -hmm. And I was sort of rereading it. I have to read it a lot because I don't get it all, <laughs> you know. I mean, it takes a long while to sort of, but there was one thing that he, that struck me last night and uh, it was about entropy and how he said, uh, 
he was talking about how entropy gets even more and more and more disruptive until something, uh, something reaches out to change it. That's not his words exactly, but that's what I got from that. And I thought, you know, it's the first time I didn't have hope or I got scared. You know, I, I, I don't mean to, I mean, I write about it. And, um, but living without being able to imagine a future or knowing what that feels like, just the imagining part, not having that because we are in a place of unknown. I hope I'm not bringing anybody down, but it's, um, that's the hard part. I mean, to be present is great. I mean, it's yogic. It's what you want to be in the moment, but not to be able to imagine especially for the younger generation, um, to imagine a future, you know, right now is so hard. And so I, you know, what you, and seeing, you know, uh, yes, last week, somebody was afraid to speak about their rage. And, and then you said, you gave them you know, comfort and affirmation that it's important to feel and speak your rage. Uh, uh, it feels like this cosmic rage, <laughs> you know, that is, is clouding the love and the, the peacefulness that makes our humanity, you know. So, yeah. Lynn, as much as I, you know how much I love you and appreciate you having, you've attended Watch Me Work for so many years, and I'll say two things from love, welcome to a place where I live pretty much every day. Yes. And I know. From having, yeah, I mean, because we know each other and having, from having lived here in that kind of place for 57 years now, having my parents, watch my parents and my grandparents and my cousins and aunts and uncles having lived there, I will say to you, this is where the work is. Because, okay. you know, because, you, you know, and you've already joined in the marching and all, all that beautiful stuff. This is where the work is. That's what also, that's what Pema Chodron would say. Yeah. In these difficult times, this is exactly where the work is. This is it. This is the moment. This is the, 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 the thing. This is the place where you do your work. And if what you, it, what you find it impossible to do is imagine a place where it can get better, that is the work. That is the work. We know the alternative, you know? <laughs> we know the alternative. So that is the work. That is the that we, you need to pull your focus together, join in communities like this and other communities, march if you still are, you know, able, interested and, and still feel okay. You know, I marching in the daytime is, is, oh, you know, in the daytime, you know, when it gets, starts okay. getting dark, you know, feeling that the violence is organized. Sure, it is organized. Even if two people organize it, it is organized by whom is my question. That's and my question. the idea is just because, say you go into a bar and you're, you're having a good time and a couple of, let's say people, who knows, men, women, doesn't matter. A couple of people get liquored up and start fighting and throwing things, right? Are all bars bad? No. Two people organize some stupid, start doing some stupid shit right and that's that's the that's the that's the thing we have to realize that there that some uh, let's say criminal elements who take advantage of certain situations whether they be bars you know watering holes or rightful justice protests will do stupid shit people always doing stupid shit unfortunately i do stupid shit yeah i've done stupid shit too 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, so yeah, but you know, there they are. They get all riled up and they think they're going to do something stupid to prove something or other, you know, okay. Or, or they have some political justification for looting the store because black bodies have been looted. You know, they have a, they have a, 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 a conversation, you know, they have a, 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 but the point is, I think, Lynn, for you, aside from those folks, whoever they are, for you, this is where the work is, right here, right when you cannot imagine a future. Number one, welcome to where I live every day. And it is my calling to imagine something through. It is my calling to come here and go, hey, everybody, here I am. And if I can do it, you can do it. If I can show up, so can you. And I very much appreciate you saying that because that's what a lot of us are for. That's why I was feeling over the weekend. Like, geez, you know. You know, uh, as a, uh, just, I hope I'm not taking too much time. Audrey, am I taking too much time? We got, we only got sit for, we, yeah. can we have one, can we have one more? I think we're going to have one more question. But Thank you. Back. Okay. Let's yeah. Thank you. And um, I'm actually going to go Karima. She's Asha's mom. I don't know if you met Asha before. She's amazing at the public. Um, Karima. Hello, Asha. Hi. Hi. Hey, Karima. Oh, you're Asha's mom. Yes, I am. Uh, um, I would just like to say thank you for everything because right now, um, I know we're dealing with writing and all of that, and that's great, and that's very much a part of who I am. But um, I'm 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 in a little bit of weird space because I was because I write about stuff about race anyway, and I um, was been working on a piece that I am working on um, that hopefully I'll be finished with pretty soon, first draft. But I. I'm in this weird place. And the place is, is that I keep finding, even now through the conversations of trying to make others feel comfortable. And I can't do it anymore. Um, because I think a lot of some of what we're really seeing even though it's not right to um, burn and tear up and whatever, it, that's not right. But I think a lot. I think I think what's, what we're feeling a little bit more of is that it's enough. It's not like this is. It, it's been happening so much and so long that it's it's, it, it's at a boiling point, and everybody wants to sit down and discuss. Everybody wants to talk about it. We've been talking about it. When it has to leave the talking and reach a point of the willingness to let go of certain privileges so there's, there's justice for everybody. And I just feel like we just dance over talking and we dance over this and we talk about this and we talk about that and we still come back to the same point. I don't see change. And people in color are not in a position to make the change. We don't have that kind of power like that. So people have to get real and stop acting like they don't know what it really takes to make the change. Stop pretending. It, I, I, I told my niece, she called me, and I said, if, I, if you were sitting here and I kept pinching you, and you said, auntie, that hurts, and I keep pinching you, and you say, auntie, that hurts, and I said, well, let's discuss what we can do. What do we just, I know what it, and she would look at me and say, stop pinching me. Because the point is that hurts. The point is, is that all these discussions have to become in, come to actions, come to real change. And I know I'm rambling. I just have to say that because I don't want to, I am angry, but I'm not, I'm angry because in reality, it's nothing new. It's always been happening. 
And I think Will Smith said it the best way. Only now we can make, we can take, um, record it and it's being seen more. But it's been happening. So I just feel like, I don't know, I don't know. And I'm trying with my own piece uh, not to, to stick with the focus of what my piece is about and not try to dump all of the other stuff, this right now going into it. But I just feel, I just, I'm just tired. I'm, I'm just tired. I'm just tired of these same conversations. I'm just tired that we can't just have fairness, you know? So that's all, that's all. Yeah. I totally hear you, Karima. Um, but again, I, I would say that to Lynn, this is sister, this is where the work is. It's a different, it's a different, it's a different place. You know, you're in a different place. Then Lynn, you're a different person, you know, all that. But this is where your work is spiritually okay this yeah. is where your work is this this is where it is and to and to think of you know they have the power to change things and we don't i totally hear you and and if we could focus on the things that we do have the power to change i agree with that i totally agree with that and i and, I, and i'm totally for that but we have to recognize if I, whoever is truly in charge has the power and they have to understand that and begin to make a choice within that. We have the responsibility of how we react to what's happening and how we react and how we go about it. Now, like I said, I will not promote violence. I'm not gonna promote that. I'm not gonna ever promote that. Because um, me, I mean, everybody may not believe, but me as a woman who, as a Christian who believes, I'm not promoting that. But I am saying that sometimes you have to look at the root of things and deal with the truth and stop trying to cover, just uh, pull the veil and get real. I think that's exactly what's happening now. We're pulling the veil and getting real. But uh, for me in my practice, it's, not only do I pull the veil and see the faults of all that, that have been hidden previously, but I really also, in addition to everything I'm doing to unseat the ones in power who are not respectful to folks like me, you. that's part of it. The other part is to really have a chance to look at my own actions. I'll agree with that. And focus on the, if there, it's only a little tiny thing that I can do about a little something like this, watch me work. This is relatively small in the, in the world. You know, it's, it's minuscule, but here we are. And I would just say in addition to, and in addition to focusing on the big picture, let us not lose sight of the smaller pictures that each one of us represents, like on this screen, you know? Okay, I okay, agree. So let I, it, and let us cherish and honor. And honor. I agree, I agree. It's, act, it's, after, it's, after, it's after six o'clock, Audrey. I'm so sorry, I got lost. <laughs> I got lost. Well, we can keep talking, which uh, I know we just have a limited amount of time. Yeah, so sorry, it's after six o'clock. That is on me, my... <laughs> Skills today are lacking, I tell we've you. Had a, we've had a long day at the public theater, so. We really have. It's okay. so nice to see you, Karima. Thank you, yeah, I know. everyone, for being here. So, <laughs> we can <laughs> sign up by 3 p.m. Eastern time every day, Monday to Thursday, and I will send you a link between 3 and 4.30 p.m. Eastern. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you so much for coming. Thank see you tomorrow. You. We'll talk to you.